Now let's look at another example that is similar to the previous one. But in this case, you are taking a loan. Let's say again ten thousand dollars, and you also have an interest rate on the loan that is a four point five percent. Again, you are free to change these numbers for the example's sake. In this case, you plan to pay back your loan completely in five years, and you're going to make a monthly payment. Now. If you're paying back your loan every month for five years, that's twelve times a year. Therefore, your total payment is going to be sixteen times, sixty times, which equals to this multiply by this, and your periodic interest rate again equals to this interest rate divided by twelve times per year. So this part actually is similar to the previous example. Now, instead of calculating your Total investment at the end of 18th year, like we did in the previous example, we're calculating what your payment amount should be that you can meet your payment goal, that you can actually pay your back, pay back your entire loan in five years. So as you can see over here, I also set up an area for our calculation, and again we're gonna start with payment number one, and we're going to. Do our calculation numerically for sixty payments, as we determined earlier. Now, this method actually would not work if you don't have already guessed or proposed a monthly payment. Let's propose you are going to pay back a hundred dollars a month. Chances are you're not going to pay back your ten thousand dollar loan in five years if you only pay back a hundred dollars. But let's guess this number for now, so that we can set up our calculation. For numerical method, you always have to set up something in order to do the calculation, because you cannot ask Excel to solve for an unknown. So before you made your very first payment. Your principal amount again is this number right here, and we want absolute ad address. So during the first month, you're going to pay interest on your principal, and that equals to again this interest rate, which again needs to be an absolute address, multiplied by your prin principal amount, this one right here. As you can see, it's the same number as before. But this time you are paying thirty-seven dollar fifty cents every month for the interest. I mean, for the first month for the interest only. However, you have paid a hundred dollars in total. Therefore, out of this a hundred dollars, thirty-seven point five is for the interest. Therefore, the rest of it, which again needs to be absolute address, so a hundred minus. Thirty-seven point five. That is actual actual amount you have paid towards your principal, towards your ten thousand dollar loan principal. Therefore, after you have paid this much towards your principal, your total principal now after the payment is ten thousand dollars minus what you have paid on the principal. So after one month. You only you still have nine thousand nine hundred thirty seven point five dollars left to pay. Again, very simple arithmetic calculation procedure, very easy to understand, and we just have to keep doing that. Therefore, when it's time for your second payment, this equals to this right here. That's the payment principal after your first payment, and everything else you can just copy and paste. As you can see, you are paying a little bit less interest for the second month because your principal has decreased. And copy and paste this entire table. Ha! By the end of the fifth year, the sixteenth month, you still have about six thousand dollars left. That's not gonna work. Therefore, obviously, you need to increase this number. Let's say if we increase increase this to two hundred instead. You realize that. Well, what's happening here? This is actually negative numbers, which means that you have already paid off your your loan completely by month fifty five, fifty five, or payment number fifty five. Therefore, you don't need to pay it anymore. 
Okay, so that is probably a good thing, but that's not what you want. You want to pay it off exactly after five years, exactly after sixteen months. So obviously, this number should be above a hundred, but lower than two hundred. How do you know exactly what it is? We can use the Excel What If analysis. This is very useful, and we're going to talk more about this later. So basically, we pick this cell and we tell Excel that we go to Data, What If Analysis, Go Seek. So Go Seek means that we want to set a goal for this cell. We want this cell to be zero because we want to pay off the loan exactly at the end of the sixtieth month by changing a, a certain value. And that value will be our payment amount, because all the calculation is linked to this payment amount. When we change the cell, that will affect our final cell. And Excel will find the C22 value or our payment value that will make the cell exactly or close close to zero. Click OK, and now we have a zero balance. And that tells us that for every month we need to pay exactly one hundred eighty-six dollars forty-three cents. So that solves this problem again. If you don't believe this, there's also a formula for this kind of calculation. But Excel also has a built-in function called Payment PMT. It gives you hints for the arguments. The first one is your periodic interest rate, not your annual interest rate. So this right here. The next argument, and by the way, for Excel building functions, the arguments are all separated by comma. So the、uh, next argument is the total number of payments. That's sixty. And this last argument right here is the principal value. And you get the same answer. So. This number right here is shown in、uh, in red color because this is a payment, therefore it's a negative income. But this does agree with our numerical calculation. So again, numerical calculation is simply a powerful alternative method to do to solve problems when analytical methods are not available or not preferred.